Okay, welcome all to the second talk of the day. So we are happy to have Michael Slosser from University of Vienna. He is going to speak about uh, McDonald polynomials and identities for multivariate basic hypogeometry sets. Oh, please, uh, Michael. Okay, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure for me to uh, talk here. And uh, I'm sorry that most of this is just a survey. Uh, but I think it's not bad to have a uh, service as well. So I want to show you some connections between McDonald polynomials and uh, multiple basic hypergeometric series, especially those associated to root systems. Uh, most of the things I'm showing you will be not new, but in the end, maybe you will uh, see things that you haven't seen before. Uh, maybe modulo some very few people who we have seen the identities uh, already at the chat will have on my slides. So the idea is that uh, knowing about basic hypergeometric series and their multidimensional extensions helps you to understand uh, McDonald polynomials and the identities involving them. And on the other hand, using McDonald polynomials one can obtain then uh, and using techniques uh, from either McDonald polynomial theory or from uh, usual theory of hypergeometric series, we can get new identities, which might be useful in McDonald polynomial theory or in some other context. Well, anyway, let me review notation uh, Q. It could be just a formal in indeterminant uh, Q, but uh, for reasons of convergence, especially if infinite series are involved. Q should be less than one in absolute value. And here's the standard notation for a shifted, Q shifted factorial. Uh, I'm using this compact notation for power uh, for uh, products of those. I believe that uh, is well known to you. Uh, here's the, if, if there's any question, please interrupt me immediately. That I, I don't mind if we do that politely at first. Okay, so here's the notation for a, a unilateral uh, one directed uh, basic hypergeometric series with uh, parameters A0 to AR, U1 to BR, upper parameters on the top, lower parameters on the bottom, this Q argument set. Uh, this is this. Uh, some of these q shifted factorials, and uh, yeah, we just need this uh, where we have one parameter more in the top than in the bottom. There's a, a q down there which uh, uh, serves that. First of all, this sum naturally gets truncated from below, so this could be from sum over infinity, a over sorry, or all integers from minus infinity plus infinity. And on the other hand, since it's always there, <coughs> sorry, we don't need to write it out. Okay, similarly in a bilateral hypergeometric series, we don't have this Q there, so it's really from minus infinity plus infinity. And these are, uh, if you're not so much familiar with them, uh, E, sorry, X3 Q analogs of standard hypergeometric series denoted as. Uh, R plus one FR series, or uh, in the bilateral case, RHR series. So here's like a way to go from the Q case to the ordinary case. You replace the parameters A, B, and C by Q to the Q to the Q to the C, and formally let Q go to one, or um, if you if not formally, then from the inside the unit disk, then it uh, the 2p1 uh, tends to 2f1. And here you have the shifted vectorals, which uh, you're all familiar with, I assume. And uh, okay, so the I think I don't need to review so much of the history. So these hypergeometric series are classical objects that have been studied a lot. The Q analogs, they, uh, they appear in Combinatorics, partition theory, number theory, statistical physics, and various other areas. Uh, and 
I want to show you a few identities because you will, you will see them later in uh, multi variables. And so that you would recognize what uh, I will talk about. So here it's explicitly, this is the non terminating Cuban number theorem. It's a 1p0 series uh, and it sums to a closed product. Uh, this is an identity which was discovered more than 170 years ago. Uh, independently by Toshi, Gauss, and Heine. Uh, many other identities uh, are known in the for basic hypergeometric series. A very huge one with many parameters. And actually, it's the biggest identity in the classical theory of basic hypergeometric series, in some sense, is this summation Jackson's variable first 87 summation. So I don't have Time to explain what uh, well poised and variable poised means, but uh, there is some condition on the parameters, and it's quite general still. Uh, the series satisfying those uh, conditions. And because of the q to the minus n, it's actually a finite identity, a terminating identity. And the reason why I'm showing it to you here, because I will show you some multi variable extensions of this. Okay, and then one can, okay, this identity one could prove by induction. Uh, I'm not giving the proof, or there are other uh, techniques as well. But once you have this very general one, you can get uh, special cases which are very useful uh, easily. For instance, replacing B by AQ over B, and then let A goes to zero. These a terms here uh, drop out, which are a little bit strange. They're responsible for the series to be very well poised. And you actually get essentially half of the uh, factors remain uh, up to these, these get cancelled as well. And you, you obtain a 3p2 summation. And this is the cube of Sarsfield summation. Well, anyway. More important for this talk is actually the 65 summation. And this is also a special case of the 87. So this comes out naturally from McDonald's polynomial theory. And the idea is to know that this extends to the 87 summation here, helps us to uh, seek for extensions of identities available in the McDonald uh, theory. So this is somehow motivation. So knowing that these identities exist in the one-dimensional case, which are well understood, if one gets uh, multivariate extensions of special cases like here or here, one can look for multivariate extensions of something more general. And if one is lucky, one can uh, one finds it. Okay, so here's a, another. Identity, this comes from, let me, sorry, m going to infinity here. Uh, and uh, okay, one has to justify that this works term wise, and then one obtains the cube summation. Uh, Ramanujan's one have one summation. This I want to show you. This is a bilateral identity. Uh, and the left hand side is as general as it could be with one upper parameter, one lower parameter, P, base Q and argument Z, where Z is within an analyst, um, um, less than one greater than Q over in absolute value. And this factorizes completely. So I'm not showing you how to prove these identities here, but uh, as a, again, you will see them in some of them in uh, multiple series. Okay, now there are, we want to go to multiple series. We want to, and um, okay, and there actually it's good to know that it's just not, uh, there's not just one type, but there are different types of multiple basic hypergeometric series. And in the connection with McDonald polynomials, which actually, uh, 
the McDonald polynomials themselves come in two variants. You know, one can uh, one can think of them as uh, polynomials in infinitely many variables with a stability condition, or one can think of the variables being uh, restricted. So the product of the xi's from one to n uh, being a constant, and then one actually has a n minus one McDonald polynomials. So, in, but anyway, in, in connection with those uh, uh, multivariate uh, special functions, basic hypergeometric series associated with root systems play a big role, especially those related to the root system a n, of course. And then there are other analogs of um, like CN and um, ECN and whatever, but yeah. Uh, this talk is mainly uh, focused on AN type of McDonald polynomials and uh, root series, but I will hint a little bit towards the CN case. And basic hypergeometric, like a nice uh, theory of basic hypergeometric series associated to root system originated actually in this work of uh, investigations by uh, these uh, scientists doing uh, representation theory of unitary groups. So 1972 already, so that's almost uh, uh, 50 years ago. Uh, First, they appeared implicitly in work by Alishowskas, Juicy's and Juicy's, and then also in a paper by Chacon, Citron, and Fiedenhorn. And they actually uh, studied the multiplicity of Wigner and Bracker coefficients, so also known as three chain six J symbols of the group SU n plus one. Okay. Then they appeared explicitly written out as uh, hypergeometric series, so which uh, as multivariate hypergeometric series in a 1976 paper by Hormann, and Bloch. And then, okay, so they uh, they computed things explicitly in different ways and uh, using some tetrahedral. Uh, symmetries and, and uh, they obtained the identities for these coefficients. A first summation, and uh, I will give you an example later in the next slide. And then the question well, first of all, why uh, does one call them SU n plus one series? So today it's one is usually referring to this series as AN series, or uh, I just want to keep to this uh, terminology now, AN and not SUN plus one or, or UN. Uh, so there are different ways to refer to these series. But uh, what they have in common is that the series contains uh, as a factor, the wild denominator of the root system. I mean, at least a factor which can be associated to that. And this also extends to other root systems. So for multivariate series, we use this notation for multi indices m, m1 to m n. m in bars is simply the sum of the uh, uh, entries of this multi index. And here's an example for a concrete summation formula for an an hypergeometric series. And this is a a top sergeant summation, a 3 of 2 summation, but extended to from the n equals 1 case to arbitrary n. And what you see here is that you have this uh, kind of fundamental determinant here as a factor in this series, and other completely factorized uh, terms, depending on the uh, summation index k or k1 to kn. So everything factorizes completely. And on the right hand side, it factorizes as well. And this is 
true for any dimension for n equals one, two, three, and so on. And so in other for other multivariate series like a pay functions and, and you know, you have summations for double series, which maybe do not extend to arbitrary dimension. But here this is a summation which holds for arbitrary dimension. So that's really remarkable. But the same similar for McDonald's minimums, because you have them for arbitrary number of variables. Okay. And actually, these series, this, this is the hypergeometric case. We will turn to the, to the basic hypergeometric case uh, in a minute. They have been shown to satisfy various extensions of the world of well known identities for the, of the, which exist in the classical case. Okay, so now, so this is all, so the, but this is, of course, also a survey on, uh, on this theory of. Uh, what one could also refer to as Milne Gustafson type of uh, multivariate basic hypergeometric series because they are so closely connected to McDonald's polynomials. And I want to make this connection explicit to you. So later, so not 1972 or 1976, but 1985, Milne, Stephen Milne uh, initiated a, an extensive study. The Q analog of these hypergeometric series, which were developed by Hormon and many others, and a few others, not many people actually. And very important in the theory is this uh, identity, which uh, is commonly referred to nowadays as the fundamental theory of EN series. So, what is special about this? Uh, this is a Actually, a uh, an uh, okay. So this is actually a, <coughs> a sum which uh, just in one dimension would just sum one term, the m term, k equals m. In that case, there for n equals one, there is this fundamental determinant isn't there, and we just have one quotient here. And similarly, we have one quotient on the right hand side. But so in one dimension, for n equals one, we actually don't see this identity, it's trivial. But in multivariate variables, the idea is that this right hand side it can be expanded using these uh, fundamental determinants as uh, factors in here and these explicit Q shifted vectors. And you have extra variables, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> u1 to un, which are completely free, which you have on the left hand side, but not on the right hand side. And you can specialize them in thinking of principal specialization or whatever, like different uh, um, possibilities, or you just leave them uh, free as they are here. So sometimes in applications, they are specialized. Okay, and, so, and this identity can be used to, uh, in connection with other identities, to build up a uh, the theory of EN series. And one of the consequences is that actually, and this is a trick you don't have in one dimension, that you, uh, this is true for all N, so you replace N by N plus one, and then you have K1 plus K2 equals N, or for, for N equals uh, one in the beginning, so for n equals two, you have a, a, a summation in one for one series, and for in, uh, if you replace n by n plus one, and then actually the series is can be seen to go from zero to m for the for the absolute value k for the sum of the entries from zero to m. Okay. Uh, sorry, the k1, kn is greater equal to zero. So this is, comes from, from this factor here. And uh, the other condition comes from, from here. Well, anyway, so this is now a multivariate 65 summation. And the special thing is that you have this uh, fundamental determinant here, proportion of fundamental determinants, and you have also this extra factor, which comes naturally. Okay, 
And actually this identity will appear later as well. So uh, about the special case of the domain. So here's another special, another consequence. It's the non-community Fibonacci theorem. Uh, okay, and then there are one, one summations connected to it. Uh, as already mentioned, AN basic hypergenetic series also referred to as SUN or UN series. Uh, depending on how, how one use them. Uh, Robert Gustafson, 1989, was the first to extend uh, these series to other root systems. Well, actually not the, the extent, but to find analogs. To, uh, and he found many also closed form identities for other root systems. And also he introduced related uh, multivariate integrals associated with systems. So uh, if you look, think of special functions, uh, the gamma function, that integral, closely related to hypergeometric series, Q vector integral, Q uh, hypergeometric series or basic hypergeometric series. It's natural to think of multiple integrals uh, related to this series. And that's what Gustafson worked out. Okay, here I want to show you uh, what actually, and this is a very rough classification, what an AN basic hypergeometric series is. And uh, one can argue if this is enough to ask for, but what they usually have in common is that there is some kind of factor here, which is here the, uh, which I will refer to as the fundamental determinant, but uh, which is, it can be recognized or associated to the one denominator for AN. And usually the sums contain this. So this is now AN series. So we have actually the N plus one, uh, dimensional space and there's some connection between the vectors and, and um, okay. And actually thinking of series, the sum of entries should equal a constant and this is somehow also reflected here. What we have uh, sum of entries is N. Uh, well, anyway, so this is thinking of this, if we restrict, the sum of the ki is to n. Sorry, I'm we're still in this page. Replace kn plus one by n minus uh, the sum of the uh, ki is from one to n. And writes it out in terms of the, so if one eliminates the kn plus one, in other words, one can write it in this form. So this fundamental determinant becomes this. Um, which uh, this, um, well, it, it equals this. So you recognize again the fundamental determinant, but now the J equals N term is uh, right here. And in one dimension, so if N equals one here, so that corresponds, uh, yeah, so, so that you essentially get something like one minus a constant of G to the two K. Okay, so anyway, so this is uh, what you have also seen here. So sorry. So this comes from the J equals N plus one term actually to this factor. So it comes naturally. Well, anyway, uh, the CN case is similar, but now you have uh, a different type of I would like to call it fundamental determinant appearing as a summand in the series. And for other root systems, uh, it's analogous. And while I call them now fundamental determinants, it's maybe better to say that these factors can be associated to the respective wild denominators. Uh, the problem. So you have this um, product here and it's taking of the positive roots, the root systems, and get this, uh, these formal variables into the 
minus alpha have to be replaced by other variables, which appear then in the sum. Okay, so here's actually, uh, so as I mentioned, there's the 65 summation, but there is also a more general summation, the Jackson summation, the 87 summation. And this is what we found then by a systematic search, more or less the AN variable first balance Jackson summation, uh, which I will refer to later. So it's a bit more general than the 65 summation coming from the fundamental theorem of AM series. And actually, it, what is also interesting that it comes in two forms. So one can truncate it uh, at uh, the ki goes from zero to mi because of these factors. So it, the ki is all from zero to mi. Or one can do some kind of analytic continuation of the null argument that are truncated here. So the, it's still a finite sum. But now that k is restricted to be less equal to n because of this term now. So in one dimension, for n equals one, the two identities are just the same. In an analytic sense, they are anyway also the same. They just uh, vanished here differently. But anyway, so if you write out the terms, they are. Um, you have different terms. Okay. So the CN case is here. That was found by Benison Gustafson uh, and uh, Ming and Lily independently. Uh, okay. Here you have the CN fundamental determinant here. And otherwise, it's similar. This cannot be really well truncated. Elsewhere. Uh, okay, so this is really a sum where the ki is all go from zero to mi, which is typical in the CM case. And also, I will refer to this identity later. Okay, so before we come to McDonald's polynomials, I want to just show you some typical ingredients used in AN series. So to split terms in two parts. For instance, what you usually do in, when you do induction or work with functional equations, here you split in, in not in two parts, but you split factors in n plus one parts using partial fraction decomposition. So that's a useful ingredient. And actually this particular partial fraction decomposition can be used to prove the fundamental theorem of the AN series. So one shows that both sides um, satisfy the same functional equation, and then looks at a, a, a particular extra value result, something like that. Then also there are symmetries which uh, are involved, which, okay, so it's actually not difficult to prove these things, but and if you have never worked in the end series, this looks quite surprising. So this huge factor here is just because of the many symmetries, it uh, reduces significantly. So these are identities which uh, elementary type of identities, which take the rule of well-known elementary identities known in the one-dimensional theory. Also, if you reverse the order of summations, for instance, the binomial coefficient n choose k is known to be, or, a, or m choose k is known to be symmetric with respect to replacing k by n minus k. And similarly, this a n variant is symmetric. You replace m i, uh, the k i's by m i minus k i, but also we replace the u i's by Q to the minus mi over ui. The uis aren't there in one dimension, but here they 
or you always have more ratios of them in the AM case. So with respect to the substitution, it's the same. And okay, of course, when you use it, this identity to prove that. But this is also something which uh, you could be very surprised about. Okay, so here are connections, let's say, of basic hypergeometry series uh, with other theories. So, first of all, multi dimensional special functions. So, a uh, explicit uh, multivariate uh, data integrals uh, can be um, yeah. it can be sometimes if you take residues you can you obtain um, you, you can get from these multi-dimensional integrals or abbreviations identities for basic hypergeometric series and uh, so there's this intimate connection uh, there are Applications to quantum groups, in special cases to plane partition enumeration. As I mentioned, in applications, of, often these three variables UI have to be specialized in a, in a particular way, but by due to the some integer power. Then in analytic number theory, so actually these two points are in analytic number theory, so explicit. Uh, formula for sums of squares or families of eta function identities, explicit expansions. There's a, a close connection between these. And in the Carl Poinola theory, first of all, implicitly, so that uh, uh, Nomi and Katja have, uh, have uh, obtained raising, worked out raising operators the McDonald polynomials, uh, the row type that we need. And the uh, column type three Kirillov and Nomi. But anyway, so there they appear implicitly and explicitly in a way. And this is what I want to show you today uh, by via principal specialization, by uh, identities for using identities for the column for normals. And actually, there's this. So this is not true maybe, but it's really application. So in some way there's application, but one could also say these are just connected. Okay. So what about tools for deriving new identities? So this I just want to give you one tool, but because uh, of course of reasons of time, but and this is also just a very vague now, uh, so that you get an idea what is it's all about. So inverse relations are a very important tool for deriving new summations from given ones. And the idea is very simple. If you have two multivariate sequences, let's say AK and BM, formally now the full uh, set of N uh, or Z to the N, so uh, Interdimensional integers, let's say, it's indexed by multi, uh, multi integers, say, so that we can do that already one in, in n dimension. And suppose the BNs are, uh, can be expanded in terms of the A case, and we have the partitions F and K. So this is now formal sum over all integers. But suppose this is a, and suppose this is lower triangular F and K, uh, then, uh, then there's no problem uh, inverting it always and, and, and to have the, the uh, actually equivalence of the two identities that you will see. So suppose you will be able to invert this infinite matrix. And uh, actually, I didn't write what I mean by uh, inversion of this uh, n dimensional matrices, let's say, or index by n dimensional integers. This just means that if you, I'm not sure, maybe I can write something. 
I actually mean that uh, f n k g a l so k is now so sorry this is a formal this is a multi-index and this should be delta n l so these are multi-indices n and l so this is just a multi-sum and because it's lower triangular this is actually a finite sum so the ki's run from l i to m i yeah and actually this is also equal to uh, g m k f k l automatically okay again overall multi this is thing and then uh okay so i'm actually here yeah so these two identities are equivalent then because you can just uh, uh, expand the DLs in terms of the uh, AKs again, and, and you interchange some actions and we use this autocanality relations. Okay, so this is an important tool. And actually, this is also a tool which is can be used in McDonald's terminal theory. Uh, and for the to be able to apply this tool, uh, let me remove this. One has to know explicit multi dimensional matrix inverses. This is clear. Often, one is having a, one is given the matrix which one wants to invert. And, and then one develops tools to be able to invert it explicitly. This is often how it works. Or one does it in advance, like builds up a theory. But anyway. Uh, and of course, Usually, it very often comes from the application. So one has an identity and one wants, one seeks to invert it. And, and then one works up this uh, explicit multi dimensional matrix inversions. So let me actually want to. Uh, yeah, here I am with that. Thank you. So now I want to give you applications of this method in McDonald's polynomials. And on the other hand, it will, McDonald's polynomials will help to obtain these, uh, to obtain, to develop further like uh, theory of multi dimensional basic hypergeometric uh, identities. So, this is, I think I can be very brief here. Uh, McDonald's polynomials, uh, we work with variables x. Uh, one can also think of a, a sequence of variables, but or a, or a set of variables, whatever, a finite set or a counted infinite set. Uh, and it's convenient, and I will find it convenient to work with the queues actually with the dual basis of McDonald's polynomials. And they form a vector space basis of uh, the ring of uh, symmetric functions in the XI with partitions which are rational functions in Q and T. And as you Although they become, they show up in representation theory, combinatorics, special functions, quantum groups, Hilbert schemes, double up and Hecke algebras, and certainly in other areas as well. Okay, and they generalize many important cases of symmetric functions, sure functions, or little bit polynomials, jack polynomials, solar polynomials, so. Zone polynomials themselves are a special case of the Jack polynomials, and they extend the, uh, the sure functions also. Okay, and then the classical cases elementary symmetric functions, complete and monomial symmetric functions. And just a fixed notation, I mean, partition is a finite sequence of uh, non negative integers which decrease. So I allow zeros to be here. And the number of uh, uh, non negative, a uh, non number of positive increases the, the length of the lambda. 
uh, and the non zeros are zero entries are for the parts. And uh, some of uh, some of the entries here is the weight. Of the okay. And you all know the. So I want to just give a formal definition of mechanical monomials. So we need the monomial symmetric functions for that. And uh, a multi monomial x to the alpha is just uh, is defined for multi indices alpha in this way, as you are familiar with. And the uh, monomial symmetric function here is that defined you take the sum of all distinct uh, permutations alpha of lambda. So you, alpha is, uh, where is the alpha? Yeah, alpha, so alpha is associated to lambda. So of course, you, uh, if you order it in decreasing, then you have the alpha, you have the lambda. Uh, and it should be considered as a multi uh, set and then you permute uh, the different uh, exponents, let's say. And this can be done for any number of variables n. Also, taking inverse limits for infinitely many. But, okay, so this is all classical. And why I want to define this is because I just want to show you that the two numbers, they are indeed um, well defined. In this way, this is from McDonald. So actually, he did it for the p lambdas, but up to this p lambdas, they're the same. So one can uh, order them with respect to the dominance order of partitions and extends it in terms of the monomial symmetric functions and uh, yeah, the leading partition now is not one, but because of the p lambda, the p lambda, it's the p lambda. U of t, a certain expression depending on u and t in the lambda, but not depending on x. And these are orthogonal now. And this with respect to the q t extension of the whole inner product, which, I, which has been defined in other talks now, so I don't need to show it. Okay, and actually what is also interesting maybe is that this expression for B lambda, although it depends on N, you can take any N which is greater equal to the length of lambda and you get the same expression. Because I'm allowing zeros between the numbers as well. Okay. And here's actually the, uh, the connection to the P of lambdas, which you might be more familiar with. Uh, it's just that, for reasons which I will show you soon, I want to work with the few numbers. So actually, this is the relation between P lambda and P lambda. And if you take, if you couple these in this QT whole inner product, the P numbers and the Q mu's, you get delta lambda mu. So the Q mu's are the, the dual, is the dual basis of the P lambda. And the, Nice thing is that actually they're the, the same. So you could actually take the square root of the you know, lambda and, and but you and, and normalize it, but but then you don't have nice uh, linear factors uh, because yeah, so because there's not a nice square here. anyway. Okay, and uh, what you've also seen so analytically you can encode also this, uh, actually any set of, or any pair of dual uh, uh, polynomials by the Cauchy identity. So the right hand side will not change and we will have these two dual polynomials here. And in this case, you have the P lambda, the Q lambda. And also I will refer to this later. So this is the Cauchy identity only now with two sets of variables. N and M could be infinite as well. And now, because we're interested in explicit uh, series representations, so, uh, explicit uh, 
uh, types of multi-dimensional basic hydrogen metric series. We want to also figure out or, or we, want, we want to understand whether McDonald's polynomials can be written in explicit terms. I mean, it's a legitimate question at first. So what about the one row case? So I'm not considering now the column cases, so they can be done as well. So that would be the piece, but the, the queues, the, the dual case, now we're looking at the row, one row, two row, and so on. And if we uh, specialize this, I think we put x equals uh, u and, and replace y by x's, and essentially gets this here. So one gets the generating function of the one row McDonald polynomials. And these all are uh, refer, uh, actually denoted gr. If q equals d, one has the complete symmetric functions. And in the QT case, these are called the modified complete symmetric functions. And, and you have, you can actually use the Q binomial theory. You just have a, a convolution of these products. And you can write the GRs explicitly now as a, a multifold sum. You know, the Q shifted vectorals and these uh, X's which appear here uh, with some power. So this is an explicit expansion. Okay, so now we can. Okay, then we can look at this further. We will do that soon, but uh, first, the, there are also, uh, there are actually a algebraic basis, these GRs uh, of the ring of symmetric functions, actually, of the algebra, graded algebra. We can expand them in terms of other bases, so we can actually get. Uh, expansions of one row McDonald polynomials in terms of other classical bases, let's say elementary or complete symmetric functions or power sum symmetric functions, whatever we want. Uh, here are some properties which I implicitly will make use of later to obtain identities. So, stability I already mentioned, and then one that actually if one has the same number of rows as variables, uh, or as, as, yes, here we can pull out the highest factor, x1 to xn. Not because this is now the, not the p, but the q, there is this factor in addition. Well, anyway, and if one has, if lambda is, uh, is longer than n, then we have zero. So we know uh, the uh, McDonald polynomials vanished there. Uh, so these are properties which are used. Uh, let's look at the one row case. Uh, yes, uh, wait a moment. Uh, why am I saying this was ah, the one variable case? So we have one row and one variable. So if one, we only have one variable. For p, p of r would be x1 to r. But because we at q, we have an additional factor here, which is p lambda qt in that case. In the n equals 2 case, that's already interesting. So this is the a1 case, because the n variable case with the restriction x1 up to xn, the product of those is 1, is called the an minus 1 case. So if we let x1, x2 equals 1, we still have just the, uh, so x2 is actually uh, uh, x1 to the minus 1. And if we write x1 then as e to the minus i theta, then uh, the qr is actually not just one term, but uh, a sum. And this turns out to be uh, the so-called continuous true of the spherical polynomial of degree r and cosine theta. So this can be, because of symmetry, we can write this as um, in terms of cosine theta. 
And uh, this is a well known uh, special function to be orthogonal. Yeah. Uh, or the Q given for polynomials. It's another uh, word for that. So these are actually two phi one series. So the McDonald polynomials could be considered as multivariate two phi one series. So it should be a bit quick, I know, because of time. So this is the two row case. And is there a formula there? Yes, one can use, one can actually use formulas for the one row case by applying this recursion actually. So one expands the two row case without terminals in terms of products of one row without terminals. The coefficients are well known and they factorize completely. And this was obtained by Gene Fiosetti in 1992. Uh, okay, my core for Michelle Lassau then looked at the three row case, obtained a complicated looking formula where this condition, similarly with three rows and with one row and two rows, whether, yeah, for this, this did not factorize in that case. So, so this is actually a, a determinant, which mm, this can be viewed as a determinant. So it looks very much like, so in, in, in one dimension, it just factorizes completely, but in multi dimensions, this would be something that you will know, see it later. So what Jing and Josephic actually did, they inverted this formula. Uh, this formula, the pre formula, but this is now a special case of it. This is for one row McDonald's polynomials. So this is a, a rule for for multiplying a McDonald's polynomial with a one row McDonald's polynomial and the expansion because of uh, uh, homogeneity uh, is just in terms of two row McDonald's polynomials. Uh, and the coefficient is actually nice. They completely factorized without this term, which I mentioned here would be ugly in the multidimensional case, or actually a determinant. And uh, there's a matrix inversion involved and some orthogonality relation. And actually, it turns out that the matrix inversion here needed to invert these coefficients, giving these coefficients. This orthogonality relation is a special case of the 65 terminating 65 um, terminating 65 summation. And it's a explicit matrix inversion which was um, observed, let's say, by pursuit in 1983. So one can specialize these parameters so that you have delta and L here and actually you replace n by n minus L, you chip the sum. And it's, yeah, it's uh, not too difficult to get this. Okay, so now here are actually the pre coefficients in the multi dimensional case. Uh, and this is the explicit pre formula, which uh, was actually found first, I believe, by Cornwinder, but then published by McDonald. 1987. And this, I already mentioned, is an explicit expansion of the n row McDonald polynomials multiplied by the one row and expansions in terms of n plus one row McDonald polynomials. And the nice thing is that these coefficients completely factorize. Now, how to invert that? So, for uh, here's the general case. Which I think that Nassar, uh, he obtained the, the n equals two case uh, earlier, but this was not nice. And this is now written in a compact form. So for n equals two, this uh, still factorizes nicely. Or I think let's no, so sorry for n equals one. Yeah, so this is just one has just one entry. And these two terms which are here 
there can be uh, a connect. But in general, because this bother goes from one to n, this does not factorize. And that's why it was not easy to, to see this uh, uh, formula or to guess it in multi uh, series. But using uh, operator techniques, it comes out naturally. So this is a recursion formula. So, and one can iterate this and to get the complete expansion terms of one row, McDonald's normals and the explicit expansions are known. So I want to actually come to multivariate identities as well. So I want to uh, uh, I want to explain this what I call evaluation. So it's defined on an algebra basis of lambda uh, q ut, namely on the power sum symmetric functions. So you, you evaluate it. Uh, it's just one minus e to the r, one minus t to the r, or t to the r for each r grid equal to one. If you think that u equals b t to the n, you can actually see that we have principal specialization. And uh, yeah, and actually, uh, I want to be a little bit quick here. Actually, it's nothing else than the statistic substitution of uh, you replace x by 1 minus u over 1 minus t for the set of variables x we have for any symmetric function f. So u is slightly more general than the t to the n, but now we have the one minus um, if t to the n is see immediately that you have this um, okay expansion, you have this you have uh, r terms here, uh, or n terms, sorry. Anyway, let's uh, evaluate it. If you Evaluate the McDonald polynomials. So there's this explicit formulas by McDonald already. And we see they have one quotient of factors if n equals one here also. Yeah. If you apply it to the Cauchy identity to the Q variables, you get this identity, which also McDonald already pointed out. And this is actually nothing else than the Q by normal theorem for McDonald polynomials. And this turned out to be a starting point in the development of a whole theory of identities uh, of series with McDonald polynomial argument, worked out by Kaneko, Baker Forrester, Olivarno, and, and other people. And here they still appear the p lambdas. So only the q lambdas disappeared because of principal specialization. So in other cases, for instance, if you apply it here to the, you have to only have one set of variables, you can apply to the gray formula, and you don't see the McDonald two normals anyway because they got evaluated. So if you want to, we can apply it. And what we obtain is after some simplification. So we uh, evaluate this, uh, with that, and evaluate that, and write up these coefficients explicitly. Everything is factorized completely. And this turns out, and uh, I was mistaken in my abstract because I actually claimed it would be a 3 at 2, a 3 p 2 summation, but it's actually a 6 v 5 summation. So sorry, this, so this is a uh, and this turns out to be a special case of Milne's 65 summation. Okay. I want to ask because I do we have a few more minutes or is time already over for me? Okay, okay, please continue. Okay, I would can I continue? Yeah, yeah, please continue. I will be very quick. I want to apply it now to the recursion because it's the dual identity. And now you get a similar sum, which again is a 65 summation, but now instead of a factorized fundamental determinant, you have this determinant here, which 
is less nice, but actually it's connected to the McDonald's operator applied to a rational function. Uh, so in some way it's also nice, so it can be, uh, yeah, this determinant. Anyway, uh, so you have one determinant and everything else uh, factorizes completely. And now uh, what I already mentioned, you have 65 summations, you can ask what about 87? And using similar techniques, in more generality, without specialized variables, one obtains uh, this 87 summation. This was applying inverse relations to Mills uh, and Jackson summation. So this is a uh, this has this determinant in there. Everything else factorizes completely, and. Uh, here are some, and then one can use this to get other identities similar to the classical theory. So here is a, uh, this is slightly misspelled Ramanujan, I'm sorry for that, because the conference is in India, I wanted to give this uh, once I want, I wanted to show this uh, identity. So this is a multivariate extension of the once I want summation, again with this determinant, which does not factorize. In general, but in the n equals one case, you would just have a, a, a linear term which simplifies. Everything else sets, uh, factorizes completely. Here's another variant of the one to one summation. Here's another one. And, uh, and this is now the last uh, identity, which actually needs two pages. So if one does it formally, one inverts formally CN checks the summation of Lindner, Lily, or Dennis and Gustafson. Now I spell it correctly with double N. One obtains, so sorry, here. Uh, this is everything explicit. Right? And here's the second page. Here you have this huge determinant. And I think it. Um, yeah, it goes from the entries from here to here, and everything else factorizes completely on the right hand side as well. And this is actually still a conjecture. So, because, uh, yeah, it was just uh, formally applied, and, uh, but it works out by computer. So, thank you very much for your attention. Let us thank uh, Michael for a nice talk. Any questions, comments? Can I can I ask? You wrote this formula for Q in terms of products of strips um, by by inverting the Peary formula. Is there a formula in terms of products of hooks? Oh, okay. I I don't know. I don't know. I. Uh... But that's a good question because I know that in the, in the two row case, uh, I mean, in, in the simpler case, uh, such a formula has been done, at, at least in the context of modified McDonald's uh, normals, I think by Garcia and Heyman or by Heyman and someone else with pistols or so, or so I think some in that context. Uh, I think no. They, I think what they did, they so sorry. They, they did a different thing. They uh, the hook shaped McDonald's polynomials were expanded in terms of one row times one column McDonald's polynomials. If I'm correct, yeah. that like expansion was given. And no, I'm in, I'm searching for an analog of Giambelli identity for. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Yes, yeah, so I'm, uh, I believe there is no such formula. So, I mean, I, at least I have not found any uh, such formula yet. But if you uh, okay, let thanks. me know exactly what you need, then I might be able to, to think about it then. Yeah, if you send me more details. Yeah.
more questions okay so if not uh, let's thank michael once again and for a very nice talk thank you all uh,